Hi everyone. I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to use the shapes within Design Space to create this cute two-part stencil background. So this is what it would look like on your cookie. And I use this to create these two stencils, one for the dots and one for the hearts. In this tutorial, we will use the group feature as well as the welding feature. And at the end, we'll attach our design to the stencil squares. So I'm gonna create a new project here and we'll start from scratch on this. Let that save again. Hopefully this doesn't drag too badly. My internet is super slow. Okay, so we're gonna start a new project here and grab a couple of shapes. We're gonna grab a heart and a circle. And then this, as far as sizing, you can do those to whatever you prefer. I made the hearts, I believe those were 0.35, and the circles, I think we're about 0 0.3. 0 0.3. And then for visual purposes, even though they're two different shapes, I always like to give them a color. Now, we'll need to make a bunch of these. So I just went ahead and duplicated a bunch of the circles. I'll do the same right over here, duplicate, bunch of the hearts. And then I just randomly placed, oops, let's undo that, randomly place them. I didn't worry too terribly much about the distance and the exact spacing because I'll show you, we'll use the align tool to take care of that for us. And normally what I'll do is go ahead and put in my square. That's gonna be my 5.5 inch stencil background. Let's change that for the video, make that light gray. And then I'm also going to click arrange and send that to the back. And I just use this as a guide. Actually, what I normally do instead of 5.5, you gotta remember at the end to change it back. But I do like to do this when I design a lot. I'll make it the 5.25 so that I can fit my border right up to the edges of it. And once I change it to a five and a half, I'll have a quarter inch border around there. So it looks like we need another heart. And then I've just drew a box around all of them. I'm gonna use the align tool now to center those horizontally and that'll line them all up to the middle. And then I'm going to also use the align tool to distribute those vertically. And that's gonna make them all evenly spaced apart. That's why I didn't have to worry too much about where I was placing them. Now I'm gonna create a second row that is just to the dot. So I wanna duplicate that. I just put a box around it and at the top right over here, I'm gonna choose duplicate. And then I'll offset that a little bit. And get an extra dot for this one. Place my box around it, go back up to the align tool and center that horizontally as well as distribute it vertically. So this will just fit within my five and a quarter inch so that when I add that extra quarter inch around it, I have a nice border. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. I didn't need all of those. Now what I'm gonna do is for just a minute while I'm designing here, I'm gonna go ahead and 
group one row, top right up here, we're gonna group this one row, and then I'm gonna group this other row. Duplicate that a couple times. And I'm gonna duplicate this first one a couple of times. So that we're getting every other row the same. And now I'm gonna grab all of those rows, align, distribute horizontally, and I'm gonna go ahead and align the tops of only the ones with the pink dot at the top. So holding my shift key down, I'm gonna grab every row that has, oh, you know what this one is, let's see, we have heart dot, heart dot, then I got an extra dot in there. There we go, so let's go back again, put the box around those, align and distribute those horizontally to fix that. Now I'm going to grab just the ones of the heart, holding the shift key down, and align the tops of those. And see, align top. And I'm gonna grab just the ones with the circle at the top, and align the tops of those. So now we have every other row is heart, circle, heart, circle, all the way to the end, as well as they are equally distributed and they're centered up each row. Fits nicely within the borders of my square. So now I'm going to go ahead and I think I moved that just a tiny bit. I'm gonna click the undo. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup these because now I'm going to go in and group the all the red together, all of the pink together. Now once I have these set where I want them, I'm going to be very careful not to move them and I'm going to group them by using the layers panel instead of clicking over here. So I'm going to go through and just grab all of the pink hearts or red hearts. All the red hearts. We're going to just scroll up the layers panel. I'm gonna grab all the hearts and then I'm gonna group those together. Uh, of course, I was almost at the top and I accidentally grabbed a pink one, so now I'm gonna have to start over. I wish you could unclick them, but it won't let you. So we're gonna start from the top. I'm gonna grab all these hearts. Pay a little closer attention to what I'm doing. And then once I have grabbed all these, I have two options. I can either group them or weld them as one piece. Since at the end of this, I will attach them to my square, it really doesn't matter which of those things I choose. If you typically slice your design out of your square, then you will have to weld them because the weld feature is only available when you have two items chosen and not more. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's weld those. So now that took all of the red hearts into one unit in the top right here of my layers panel. That is the weld result is all of the hearts. So now I'm gonna go down 
my row and pick all of the pink. And we'll do the same thing with the pink. We'll weld them together so they will be one unit. Sometimes when you have this many items in your layers panel, I've noticed design space can start dragging. So this is one case where I do weld rather than just grouping them, even though I don't have to because I'm going to attach at the end. I will weld these so that they are a single piece. So now you'll see the pink moves independently and the red stays independently. I'm gonna put it back though because I want to keep those in their exact positions. So now I'm going to group those just for a minute. You can either group or attach. Um, grouping doesn't change their colors. I'm going to take this and make it my five and a half inches that I need it to be. And then I'm gonna center those. So I've selected my hearts and dots as well as my square, a line, center because I grouped them they didn't all rush to the middle if you hadn't grouped them they would all rush to the middle and be in the center and now this grouping I'm going to group that for a minute and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want anything to move independently I want it to all be one unit so that I can duplicate it to make it a two-part so in this one that's selected here I'm going to grab one of the weld results and delete that. This one over here, I'll grab the other weld result and delete that. And if you grab the, oops, like there, I grabbed the wrong one, so I'm just going to hit the undo button. I'm going to grab, make sure I grab the one that got the hearts in the corner. Delete. Then, I can go ahead and attach my hearts, attach my circles, and those are ready to cut, and they will perfectly overlap one another. Unfortunately, I wish you could see through and that that would work out, but um, when you go to put these onto your cookies, they will create this pattern, like with the red hearts and with your pink dots. So that would be ready to cut, ready to go. If you have any questions, place them in the comments.